Hey, it's your buddy Peace and Harmony with you here today. Zooming in on the topic of projection, narcissistic projection. What does this mean? What does this feel like? What's happening when this takes place and when it's used as what is called a defense mechanism from a narcissist or someone who is using this defense mechanism on you or in your environment? And this is in response to a uh, viewer inquiry. They wanted me to elaborate on this. I'm happy to do that. Uh, projection was a term that was first coined by Sigmund Freud, the father of psychoanalysis, um, essentially in the early 1900s. And he ob observed this in his practice when those people who he was speaking with would be so afraid to handle certain emotions, uh, certain feelings, that they had basically pushed them down, they had repressed them down into their, into their subconscious being unaware of them. And so, and what it, he had found uh, occurred was that uh, these people would then project these feelings that they were very afraid to deal with, that they were afraid to come to terms with because they felt that perhaps they'd be overwhelming or just really painful to deal with, whatever the um, issue was. And they'd basically project that onto another person. It's essentially like blaming somebody for something which they have absolutely no part in um, either their behavior didn't warrant it, um, their thoughts didn't warrant it, their feelings didn't warrant it. They're just ascribing false blame, false accusation um, onto this person. So what ends up happening, it ends up relieving the narcissist who's engaging in this behavior. So they don't have to deal with the painful emotion. The person who they're inflicting this projection on is the one who gets to feel all the pain, all the abuse, all the guilt, all the shame, all the difficult um, and complicated emotions that that person doesn't want to deal with, they basically project it out there onto that person and make them feel all those terrible feelings that they felt inside. I'll give you an example. Um, for example, let's just say um, a woman is getting married and you know she's in her young 20s and it, here's her beautiful day that she's been looking forward to and her mother passes away just a week or two before the wedding. So essentially the wedding, which was going to be a joyful, fun, jubilant time, the beginning of a new life, now had a tone of grief, of mourning, of despair, and of loss. So rather than wearing you know, a white, beautiful, flowing dress, um, you know, looking like a Cinderella, basically the whole mood of the event, the marriage was now toned down and darker colors were worn. Um, you know, there was a very somber feeling to the wedding, having just lost a mother figure just prior to a marriage. So now imagine that woman who had gone through that situation. Um, you know, she's supposed to be feeling joyful and excited for this new life with her, her husband and to create a, a family together and live the life of their dreams. She's supposed to be joyful, uplifted, free to live, you know, free to consummate this marriage and, um, you know, and, <laughs> and begin their new life. Well, if you had, you know, just enc encountered this traumatic event, you'd have to repress those feelings of grief, of loss, of mourning for that mother who had just passed before the wedding. Because you don't want to be, you know, in your wedding, um, you know, saying your vows in front of the church, in front of the congregation, all the family, you know, all your friends. And, and being very, you know, somber. I mean, it's supposed to be a joyful consummation of love. So rather than being depressed, calling off the wedding, saying it's not gonna go forward, um, instead you push down those feelings of loss, of guilt, of shame, of all the confusion, you know, why me? Why did this happen, you know, to me right before I'm about to have the happiest day of my life. This is such a significant event. How, how, you know, why did this happen to me? and all those feelings that get associated with it. Rather than letting that go and expressing it to her husband, she says, no, I'm just gonna be strong, I'm just gonna bottle it up, I'm gonna button it up, and we're gonna go on and we're gonna live our life happily ever after. So it's like, you know, toughing it out, not experiencing, not dealing with the emotions, bottling them down, putting them in your subconscious, which is your uh, cerebellum, which is basically um, kept hidden and away from your awareness. So it's a subconscious sort of driving factor in your life then at that point. If you repress something very traumatic like that, it becomes 
essentially it's still part of you you just haven't dealt with it and you carry it with you into you know the rest of your days your relationships your family your job and something very severe and traumatic like that would be a perfect um, experience for that of projection so let's just say for example then you know they go on their honeymoon they come back they have a, a child they have another child you know the first one's a male um, he's you know the leader you know um, she doesn't really identify a perfect opportunity for projection there because you know men are supposed to be strong they don't really show a lot of emotions and you know not a good target to project upon in other words you don't want to kick the dog and make them wince and whine you know that's exactly what projection is it's it's ascribing some sort of pain to an innocent figure like when someone comes home mad from work and kicks the dog <laughs> the dog did not do anything to get in their way was just being it was just there it just was an outlet for their aggression but anyway back to our story so along comes a daughter and here's this daughter you know when when this daughter is born it reminds her of her relationship with her mother and the loss and the pain and the grief that was associated with it um, the shame the confusion everything that was associated with that whole that death that that couldn't really be processed couldn't be dr grieved appropriately really you know on a sudden death so then here comes this uh, uh, female uh, born into the family and rather than had that you know that child just um, growing up in a, in a happy healthy environment this child right from infancy gets projected on in other words that child is not going to be able to you know live a carefree child life that the child you know then becomes the target for projection in other words that child is going to receive um, shameful treatment um, you know emotional abuse physical abuse um, false accusations you're such a terrible child um, you know don't you cry don't you cry I'll get you know I'll give you something to cry about and then you know the whole projection you know you're such a you know you're you're terrible um, you know, all in, you know, assigning all sorts of negativity, blame, hostility, hatred onto this innocent child that did nothing to deserve it. So they're projecting all their hurt that they did not process onto that person. So that daughter then has to go through an experience, the shame, the loss, the grief, the abandonment, the feeling of emptiness. They're instilling all those feelings subconsciously onto that person they're pushing it off onto them they're blaming them they're putting it into them into their environment so that they now have to carry the full burden of all of those negative issues when they had done nothing really to um, create that it is, is it a defense mechanism meaning it's a way of protecting oneself but it's projecting it onto another person so rather than you having to deal with the feelings you direct that all to a person so they then in their life have to experience and process and go through all the feelings that you could not process so that child who is shamed abused emotionally abused neglected uh, feeling unloved by the parents feeling neglected by the parents feeling unguided not pr not there the parents who were not there for them all the feelings you know um, the isolation abandonment rejection that that child felt from the parents is really all the grief and depression and anguish that the mother felt but could not process and just basically thrust it all onto that child the child ends up growing up very um, alienated from the family because so much negativity has been projected on them does that make sense I hope that is clarified to you because what it really does is it really pushes all those feelings off into another so that they have to animate them and bring them to life go through it all and then the the parent has a sense of dealing with it since they've pushed it all into their child so they get their they, they get then the um, the payout for the the parent is to get to see their child grieving struggling unhappy crying um, emotionally weak not able to enter into life you know uh, with strong legs strong support uh, strong nurturing um, low self-esteem so the child then is entering their life with without the parental support <laughs> without the, the nurturing you know do, do you follow me there and so they enter into their leaf with life 
their elementary school, their um, junior high, their, uh, their high school with a sense of loss, a feeling of um, emptiness, a feeling of shame, a feeling of depression, grief, um, not being accepted, a feeling of, of being rejected for not knowing why. Because all the negative projection that was put onto that child is a form of trying to process that. So it gives them an outlet. So they can basically see it uh, on a screen, you know, in their child. Um, and so that child has to handle all the negativity rather than them. And so they kind of get to go scot-free. That's, that's a defense mechanism and that is projection. Peace and harmony with you here today. I hope these videos help. Please share and please subscribe for more tools, videos, and support.